This is Tips for Travellers. Inspiration, advice and tips on finding and having amazing travel experiences on both land and at sea. Get more tips on must-see and must-do travel at tipsfortravellers.com. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another episode, of course, of Tips for Travellers. Today we're heading off to a place that pretty much everybody that I know or have ever met who've been there raves about it, and it's called Key West. Personally, I have a slightly more ambivalent feeling to it, though I can see why lots and lots of travellers love it. In fact, the, I was there most recently on a Titan Travel Florida tour, and the tour guide, Debbie, she absolutely loves Key West. She loves taking tour groups there. She goes on vacation there, and I can see why she really likes it. You know, I've been a couple of times uh, and definitely I can see it's evolving, it's changing, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. It does at times have a slightly down market feel, a little bit of a rundown feel, but it's got a lot of character. It's definitely got a lot of party sense of atmosphere and vibrancy. Cruisers are increasingly calling on there, and I wonder if that's actually one of the reasons that Key West is sort of shifting a little bit, because it's just getting mobbed by these cruise uh, you know, ships that just gorge of people and uh, you know that's perhaps affecting some of the specialness of Key West. Uh, it's you know close to the port it's very party like there's some tourist tat close to the port but once you start spreading out you can find some much more you know vibrant and exciting parts of Key West and I'm going to talk about that in my tips for travelers around how you can make sure you can see more than just the sort of the area that's focused around the mass tourist part. So let me give you a couple of key facts you need to know. I'll give you a brief history and then we'll get into, of course, my tips. It's the southernmost city in the United States. So it's right down there at the bottom of the United States. It's actually closer to Havana in Cuba. It's about 106 miles from Havana than it is to Miami, which is 129 miles away. So it's actually closer to Cuba than it is to, uh, to Havana than it is to Miami. It's about 90 miles across the sea to Cuba. And of course, that's what a lot of people know Key West for. There's a very important naval station based there, the US Naval Air Station, which they use to train naval aviation, which makes sense right there because it's kind of surrounded by the sea. It's got quite a small population. The population's only around about 30,000 people. And they refer to themselves as Conks, C-O-N-C-H-S. And this is the name that developed from people that moved here from the Bahamas. And in, what I didn't know, actually, is that most of the original immigrants to Key West came from the Bahamas. And a lot of people now use it to mean people born in Key West. So if, people find, if you find people referring to themselves as uh, Conks, that's what they mean. They are sort of original and born in Key West. Key West has a very interesting history. It was occupied by the Calusa people, and the first European to visit was in the 1500s. It was uh, the Spanish, and they took it as one of their territories. Now, the original name that the Spanish gave to it, and excuse my Spanish, was was called Keo Huso. Keo Huso. Now, this actually means bone key, and it's because the island was covered. Uh, apparently with the bones of the inhabitants. And the reason for that is the land is coral. It's very hard to dig into the coral. So it is quite hard to bury people. And actually still, when you see the graveyards, the old graveyards, the graves are actually above the ground because it just was so hard to dig into the coral. So allegedly, you know, all the island was covered with the bones of the inhabitants. Now, in terms of Florida, there was lots of battles between the Spanish and the British. And so the British eventually took control of Florida from the Spanish in the 1700s. And they spent some time actually shipping away the Spanish and the Native Americans to Cuba. And even when the Spanish took back control, because as I said, there's kind of this Florida pass between the Spanish and and the British, it, it largely stayed uninhabited and was mostly used as a place for fishermen. There was lots and lots of disputes over Key West and finally the Americans, which kind of makes sense since, uh, you know, the Americas are right there. It's attached to America. They made a, a very strong claim to Key West in the 1800s. And the reason was it they saw it as a very strategic place. You know, it's right there at the southern part of the United States. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a key port, a, key pay, a place where ships are passing. It's very important uh, strategically, and they want to establish a naval base there. Now, in terms of industry, uh, three, a couple of key industries really emerged from 
in the Key West area. The first was salvaging, and salvaging made a lot of people, many well, uh, many people wealthy. As I mentioned, there's this, these corals everywhere, and a lot of ships would get wrecked on it. And so salvaging, you know, going and sort of saving the people, but also taking all the, the you know, the valuables from the ship, uh, became a big, big industry in Key West. Fishing, of course, as you'd expect. And the other thing which is very interesting is salt manufacture became a very big industry. And so what would happen is you know, the, the seas would leave these, uh, the sea would leave these tidal pools, they would dry it and leave salt. So it wasn't salt mines, it was literally uh, evaporating seawater. So salvaging, fishing and salt manufacture became very important. And actually, Key West became the wealthiest city in, city in Florida, because it had so much going on for it. The other thing which I didn't know and discovered on this trip is Pan Am, the famous Pan American Airlines, which of course is now gone, was founded in Key West. It was actually set up in 1927 to fly visitors to and from Cuba and to deliver mail. So Pan Am started in Key West. Now, before the Cuban crisis and uh, the, you know, the 1959 revolution in Cuba, Key West was the, po the point where ferries and flights would, would uh, move between Cuba because obviously it was so close. Uh, it was a very isolated place. You know, it's right stuck at the end of Florida and it was pretty isolated, pretty difficult to get to. And then this all changed when a man called Henry M. Flagler, he built a railway to connect sort of the, the mainland, as it were, to the Keys and all the way down to Key West. And actually now when you drive down to Key West, you'll see the bridges that used to hold the the railway line. And the railway line didn't actually last for that long because it was destroyed in a massive hurricane in 1935. And so the United States then built a road to replace it. So that's now how you get to Key West, obviously you can fly, as I'll talk about a bit later. But driving is, is a key way to go. So I think that gives you a little bit of uh, history. You know, it was very isolated, lots of battles between the British and the Spanish and eventually the Americans coming saying this is kind of connected. It's close to, uh, you know, uh, where we are and we want to take control of it and of course it's linked to Cuba is very important. So let's talk about some of the general advice you know when's the best time to go so it's got a tropical climate so it has a, a wet and a dry season and it can get very very wet so November to April it's normally sunny it's quite dry temperatures ranging from about 24 to 28 degrees in the wet season it rains most days but these tend to be short sharp showers and then sun so like I was there uh, you know, towards that end of the the sunny period. So it was into May and, you know, rain would chuck down and then the sun would come out. So, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, the Key West does sort of call it uh, liquid sunshine because it is pretty, you know, it's normally pretty warm. It doesn't suffer from hurricanes. The hurricanes tend to pass by Key West. The last big one was in 2005, Wilma, and the island was actually completely evacuated. There was lots of flooding, but it tends not to get hit by hurricanes. Key West, you know, it's a big party town. There's lots going on and there's a lot of festivals. So pretty much every single month of the year, there's some kind of festival going on. So if you're thinking of going to Key West or you plan to go to Key West, take a look at what's on and, and sort of perhaps aim to be there. I'll give you a couple of examples. You know, in January, you've got the half marathon, half marathon and the 5K run. You've got also in January, you the Key West race week. In April, you've got Taste of Key West. You've got um, the Pride Fest, uh, the Big Gay Festival, LBGB, LGBT Festival in June. You've got the Cuban American Heritage Festival also in June. You've got uh, uh, the Gumbe celebration in October. You've got uh, the Boat and Holiday Parade in December. But basically, I've just pulled a few of those out. There's loads and loads of things going on. So pretty much if, when you're in Key West, there's probably going to be some sort of event on. So as you're planning your days, you might want to take a look at when, uh, when those things uh, are. In terms of getting there, I've alluded to it. cruises, you know, they're growing. Cruises mostly dock uh, close to the heart of the city in a place called Mallory Square. But there's actually a couple of different places they can dock. There's actually three places. There's the Navy Pier and there's a place called Pier B. Uh, there's very mixed views in the town about ships calling. And one of the things that is limited is the size of the ship. So the really big, massive mega ships can't get in because the channel to get in limits it. And most of the residents want to keep it that way. There was discussion about you know, opening it up and building and I guess dredging or digging the channel d deeper to let bigger ships in. And there was a lot of resistance to that. There's a lot, a lot of impact. You know, one million cruise passengers call there every year. 
and it is having a big impact particularly on the part around the port and um, you know when the ships are in there's hordes of people and it gets very busy down that part you can also fly into key west it's called the key west international airport but when i took a look at it i couldn't find any international connections but maybe that's an, it's linked to when it was uh, able to fly into cuba uh, it flies to a couple of U.S. destinations, mostly hub airports like Atlanta, Miami, Washington, Orlando, Tampa. So you can fly into Key West. You can drive in. It's very scenic, but it can be slow because there's only one lane in and one lane out. But it is really worth driving in because you get a great city experience. And one of the most magical parts is the Seven Mile Bridge, which is self-explanatory. And you just drive along this bridge and you've got the you know the ocean all around you, this beautiful colour, and it's really, really fantastic. But it can take about four hours to get uh, from Miami. So it's it's quite a big drive in terms of distance it isn't, but just in terms of time it is. Once you're there, um, the main way that people get around are the conch trams and other sightseeing buses. And Mallory Square is a key starting and stopping point for all. So Mallory Square, and I'll keep popping up again and again, is a very important sort of hub for the city. Uh, but most of these tram tours and sightseeing buses are at Mallory Square. Walking is also quite easy. It's not a particularly big place. You know, if you're staying at the hotels right on the east side, it's it's probably too far to walk into the sort of the, the old town of Key West. But most of the buses, uh, most of the hotels have shuttle buses and some of the tour buses will actually pass by there. So, for example, you've got the Conch train tour. They've been doing this for over 50 years and the drivers give live commentary and that's conchtourtrain.com. The other very popular one that I saw a lot was the Old Town Trolley Bus. They run 90 minute tours. They claim to cover 100 points of interest and you can get on and off at stops. So it's kind of a hop on, hop off thing. And they pass every stop about every 30 minutes and you can find that at trolleytours.com. So let's get into my overall tips and my must see and must do tips for Key West. In terms of Key West, personally, I think it should be part of a wider Florida trip or cruise than a longer stay itself. It's a, it's a, it's a fun city, there's lots going on, but I'm not sure you'd wanna go there for you know a week's vacation or two weeks vacation, I'm sure a lot of people do. For me, it's a couple of days, and so part of a wider Florida trip, if you're going to Miami, you're going to theme parks or whatever, uh, you know, included as part of uh, the stay. I would also check uh, what ships are in when you're planning to go and just to see how busy it is. And there are a couple of sites you can do it if you just, you know, um, search Google for uh, what ships are in Key West or something like that. You'll find all those sites come up and they tell you what's in, you know, so you can see how busy the town's likely to be when you're there. Now, the hotels are mostly in the new town or many of the hotels, certainly the bigger hotels are in the new town. And it's quite a long way from where you want to explore. So you may want to look at some of the hotels that are in town. They tend to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, but most of the hotels will usually have a shuttle bus, but you will find most of the hotels are, uh, you know, sort of um, on reclaimed land effectively. And we stayed like at the Double Tree Resort and there was a whole pile of those around there. So now let's get into my must see and must do things in Key West. There's actually, although it's quite a small place, there are a lot of things to see. So I want to focus on the things that I, I think you should, uh, you know, really, really absolutely make sure that you uh, spend time seeing the southernmost point is probably the most important thing to go to pretty much everyone goes there. i don't know if there's anyone that goes to key west that doesn't go to the southernmost point this is a concrete boy uh, sort of shaped monument it's a very bright colors on it it's got written 90 miles to cuba southernmost point of continental usa and you'll find lines of people line up waiting to take a photograph now actually in practice it's not actually the southernmost point the actual southernmost point of the United States is on US Navy land. It's close by, but it's close to the public. And there's actually some other spots which are even further south. So if you go to the beach areas, like in Fort Zachary Taylor State Park, for example, you actually are in practice further south than the boy, which says you're in the southernmost point. But it's the symbolic and the kind of, uh, it's sort of an iconic place that people go to, to say they're in the southernmost point. And, you know, it's probably quibbling about whether it is or it isn't, but it is the sort of official, if you like, southernmost point. Now, close by there and the area that most people explore is the Old Town. Now, the Old Town is really quite magnificent. It's got the Key West Historic District and it's the main tourist destination. And you've got a whole couple of places that I'll talk about a little bit later. But you'll find this: the buildings here are great. They're all 
structures they date from about 1886 to 1912 so they've been very good at sort of maintaining what the old city looks like and they're mostly wooden frame construction they're about one two story structures and you know they have um, peaked roofs and you know lots of what are called gingerbread trim so what they've got all around sort of the balconies and the verandas is these little wooden shapes cut out and they tend to be cut out little gingerbread man or, or gingerbread man or little detail they have pastel colors they have uh, shutters and the big porches because sort of before air conditioning the big porches would help you know keep the houses uh, cool and it's it's a very beautiful part of town and it's a great place to take pictures in terms and also in old town is where many of the things are to see so duval street is the famous street that runs basically from the harbor to the southernmost point and i would encourage you if you can walk and you don't have to be that fit because it's not that long but i really encourage you to do this just walk the full length from the harbor to the southernmost point because you do get to walk past very beautiful wooden buildings you get past walk you know as you get further away actually from the sort of more touristy part you do come across some really interesting uh, shops so Duval street is a real must do but also in the old town you've got a couple of very interesting other things to do so you've got the key west shipwreck museum now as i've already mentioned many many ships were wrecked on the the reefs and the shipwreck museum is really dedicated to telling the story of that and the wreckers the wreckers were the people who would go and do all the salvaging and so the museum covers the story of the wreckers and also has displays about uh, spanish galleons piracy the whole wrecking process and then also there's uh, some some very interesting statues and sculpture just behind that museum near Mallory square and the museum actually if you go right up the top has a great look at with great views of the city and if you want to find out more about that keywestshipwreck.com and I'll put all these links that I'm talking about in the notes of this show so you can either get those in your podcast app or of course if you go to the site Tips of Travelers and look for just search for Key West you'll find all the show notes there with all these links. The other thing which I actually personally really enjoyed in Old Town was the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum and this is uh, what they bill themselves as is the only official accredited museum and it shows artifacts and tells the story of the search and the recovery of these artifacts from a 1622 uh, treasury ship. It was recovered by a guy called Amel Fisher. And it talks in the museum about his personal struggles, the heartache, and just his drive to, found, to find this amazing uh, uh, treasure trove. And you know, also in there, there's a very interesting display about Key West role in slave trade piracy. It's very, very interesting. And you can find out more at melfishermuseum.org. The other thing in downtown, uh, sorry, Old Town, which I also found very interesting, was uh, Audubon House. Now, Audubon House, it's a mid-19th century home, and it was the home of a man called Captain John Grieger. And he was one of the major wreckers and salvagers. And he built this massive house with a beautiful tropical garden. And the house is full of uh, antique um, lithographs and engravings he painted many birds and it's really interesting and that's uh, again you can find out more at or uh, Auburn house now there are a couple of other really really important houses that you really should absolutely see um, and one of them is the winter white house and the other is Ernest Hemingway's house so let me talk about the winter white house first now uh, the winter white house is Florida's only presidential museum Truman, President Truman, spent 175 days of his presidency. He absolutely loved it. And in the house, you can see things like his very special custom-made poker table, stories of his, his visits. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a fascinating place. It's a really interesting insight into, you know, the, um, the story of Truman and the whole American uh, presidency. Uh, a couple of presidents have actually spent time there so, uh, and in Key West. So, for example, uh, John F. Kennedy visited uh, Key West uh, in November 1962, around about the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. And Jimmy Carter actually held a family reunion in Key West after leaving office. So that's really interesting. The Winter White House, it's fascinating. The place that everybody goes to, and it's a bit like, you know, the southernmost point, the other thing that everyone goes to is Ernest Hemingway's house. Now, Ernest Hemingway, um, for those of you who don't know, is a very uh, famous and well-respected author and quite an interesting character. So uh, Ernest Hemingway, he actually ended up um, 
living in in uh, Key West because he was on his honeymoon and they had uh, arrived in Key West and they'd been sailing and they couldn't get out because they needed a car and they basically fell in love with uh, the place and his wife who was quite wealthy found this house and bought it and they uh, sort of invested in it and he wrote some of his famous books he, and all through the house they talk about some of the books that he wrote there so for example he's supposed to have written one of his most famous books of farewell to arms uh, whilst in Key West. When he was there, he also fell in love with deep sea fishing. So you also find around the house lots of pictures of him doing deep sea fishing and, um, uh, you know, just the story of his love. He supposedly wrote Death in the Afternoon for Whom the Bell Tolls, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, The Short Happy Life of Francis Mankuma. And, uh, you know, so he, he has a real passion and had a, had a real passion. He eventually divorced in 1939. And after that, he only visited occasionally because he then headed off to Havana. And, and he was in Havana for most of that time. The other thing that um, Ernest Hemingway is known for and Ernest Hemingway's house is known for is these um, six or seven toed cats. And they still live on the property and they have what looks like six or seven toes and they've become pretty uh, famous. Uh, another key uh, institution beside the southernmost point in Hemingway's house is the Sunset Celebration at Mallory Square. I've mentioned Mallory Square a couple of times. It's basically a big paved area and it's where everyone congregates uh, to see the sun go down. So often, you know, if the sun goes down at like eight o'clock, you know, thousands of people will go there and it's a really big party atmosphere and you get beautiful views of the sun going down. And it's a really, really big party, big, really, really popular and almost like a must do. Um, a couple of other interesting things in Key West are uh, the Key West Butterfly Nature Conservatory, 5,000 square feet of a glass dome tropical habitat, keywestbutterfly.com. If you're into sort of nature and stuff, really fascinating. If you like aquariums, there's a pretty good aquarium, the Key West Aquarium, which is interesting because it focuses on sea life around the area. You can pet a shark, feed stingrays, they have turtles, of course, lots of fish, keywestaquarium.com. The other thing that Key West is quite well known for is the Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville. Jimmy Buffett is a singer and he wrote uh, a very famous song about Key West and the, so you have the Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville. I think the original Margaritaville is here. It's of course become a chain now and again a lot of people who go to Key West want to go to the Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville and you'll find one of uh, the most important one of those on Duval Street. So as you stroll down Duval Street you'll come across it. So hopefully that's given you a good sense for Key West. It's a very vibrant, very busy place, a little bit eclectic. Uh, people really love it. It's quite a party place in terms of lots going on. There's lots of events, lots of activities. Um, it's it's a place that I like. I don't personally absolutely love it, and I'm sure people who love Key West will hate me for saying that. But it's a place that I do think you should go to because it is very unique, it's very distinctive, and it is very important. It's a very significant part of uh, you know Florida history and architecture, and it's linked to the presidency and Ernest Hemingway and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely a place I would recommend to go. And getting there, you know, driving down uh, and past over the Seven Mile Bridge and stuff, it's a it's a great experience, and it's. Stephanie, if you're in Florida, I would include it as a place to go. A bit like, you know, if you're going to theme parks, you know, you want to go to Miami, you're going to want to go to Key West. I would really, really recommend it. And of course, in a separate podcast, I'll talk about actually other great places to go in Florida beyond, you know, the obvious places like Key West, Miami and the theme parks. So that's all I have for you today on Tips of Travels. Hope you enjoyed it. If this is the first time you've listened to it, thanks for joining. And I'd love it if you subscribed. If you are a regular subscriber or even if this is the first time, I'd also love it if you uh, left a review. And the easiest way of doing that, I've done some short codes to do that. If you go to Tips for Travelers, remembering that Travelers is spelled with two L's, the UK way, tipsfortravelers.com slash iTunes TFT. It takes you to iTunes to subscribe. Tune in TFT or a Google Play TFT and you'll find all the links that'll take you straight through there so you can subscribe or leave a review. And of course visit the site and I'd love to hear any questions, queries or suggestions about things you'd like me to cover uh, in future podcasts. So until next time, here's to happy, safe and wonderful, wonderful travels.